I'm Jimmy. I'm the host of the show. Thanks for watching. Thank you for joining us. Hey, here's a question. Why aren't these vaccination stations open 24 hours? Why is it so hard to get a shot? How is it that 7-Eleven manages to stay open all night and the places with the life-saving drugs close at 8? It's, put the vaccine in Slurpees if you have to. I want out of my house. I, it's interesting. Getting the vaccine here in California is like a college acceptance letter for senior citizens. You know, like, my dad got into Dodger Stadium. Oh, really? That's great. My mom is waitlisted uh, at the forum. This is kind of crazy. You know how you can get bumped up closer to the top of the list? By smoking. For real. Smokers have priority over non-smokers as far as the vaccination goes. Which reminds me, Guillermo, you want to have our nightly uh, smoke after the show? Y yes, I would love to. I love to smoke. Me too. I love smoking so much. That's why we smoke every day, right? I mean... That's right. Ah, cigarettes. Sweet cigarettes. C cigarettes. You know what? Maybe I'll have one now. Could I bum one off of you? Oh, sorry. I don't smoke. <laughs> you, you ruined it now. And now we're back to the end of the line. And how do you prove that you're a smoker? Do you wear a shirt with little burn holes in it? Do they look for yellow teeth? I don't know. You know when Dr. Fauci says things are going to get back to normal? He has no idea. Dr. Fauci says he can't give a definite answer on when life will return to what it once was. He says before that can happen, between 70 and 85 percent of the population will have to be vaccinated. We're currently at around 2 percent. So there's really only one thing we can do is accuse the scientists of being part of a scamdemic and do whatever we want. I'm even starting to forget what normal even was. It's like Mad Men or something. I remember it being good. I just can't really remember what happened. <laughs> and listen, I just need to know when I can jump in the ball pit of Chuck E. Cheese again. That's all. <laughs> Give me a date, Fauci. I've been, I will tell you this. I've been practicing some very cool handshakes for when things get back to normal. <laughs> this is interesting. The World Health Organization, the WHO, is currently spitballing names for the new variants of the virus that are developing. Well, maybe spitballing isn't the right phrase to use, but they're kicking some ideas around. They're brainstorming to avoid some of the demonization that can result from naming the virus after a particular country or city. You know, when they call it the UK variant or the Brazil variant or the China virus, it can lead to discrimination against people who come from those parts of the world. The main problem is when these new variants come out, they'll get names like 20I501YV1. So then people just say, oh, I got the Canadian virus, which I maybe they should just change the names, um, use names from Mambo Number no. 5. You remember that's a little bit of <laughs> Monica in Bombay, a little bit of Erica in LA? That would be fun. Or we could just name all the viruses Stephen Miller. You know what? You have to be careful with branding this stuff. This is from the grocery store. This is a bag of grapes, brand named E-COVID, like a combination of COVID and E. coli all at once. <laughs> Who is buying these? What does nature have to do to get us to re-letter a bag? Canada today had to issue a formal apology to China because of a T-shirt. A government diplomat who works at the Canadian Embassy in Beijing had these T-shirts made up. It's the logo of the Wu-Tang Clan with the word Wuhan instead of Wu-Tang. Apparently, the Chinese thought the shape was the outline of a bat referencing COVID. They didn't realize it's the logo for Wu-Tang Clan, which means right now some poor Canadian is at the Chinese Embassy in Toronto trying to explain who old dirty bastard was. <laughs> And anyway, even though it had nothing to do with the virus at all, Canada is apologizing for it, because that's what they do. <laughs> Meanwhile, in memorabilia news, a toilet seat that once belonged to Adolf Hitler is now available to the highest bidder. They're auctioning off Hitler's toilet seat. So if you really want to cheer up Donald Trump, it's kind of a two for two. This is the seat. It is the perfect gift for the most incontinent white supremacist in your family. <laughs> Since the end of World War II, the seat has been on display in the basement of a, an American soldier who now lives in New Jersey. He took it home as a souvenir after the war. Is there any question more unsettling than want to come down to the basement to see my Hitler toilet? <laughs> They're expecting it to sell for around $15,000, but, and then what do you do? What do you start a collection? You hang it next to Kim Jong-un's squatty potty? What do you do with 
This, this isn't, by the way, not the only Hitler-related item on the market. There's a bunch of stuff. Like, this is Hitler's personal shaving mug. This is the shaving mug he used to carve that little mustache out every morning. <laughs> and look, it's Hitler's mugshot. The cops finally got him. I mean, that seems bogus to me. I don't believe that's Hitler's shaving mug. His face is on it. I mean, what kind of a maniac would put his own face on it? Oh, I guess, wait a minute. Maybe that makes... Um, yes, that makes more sense. While Donald Trump is on exile in Florida, his third favorite son, Eric, is enjoying his remaining time on TV. E.T. was on Hannity last night, popping off about the massive double standard and unequal justice he and his family have so wrongly endured. There is a, a, a double standard in this country, a massive double standard. There's unequal justice in this country. You mentioned it with the new, you know, DOJ guy, you know, assistant DO, you know, head of the DOJ who's happened to represent Hunter Biden or, you know, I, I mean, you see that. Can you imagine my father ever tried to do that? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Your father had his lawyer pay off a porn star and didn't want to reimburse him for it. Can you imagine if Joe Biden ever tried to do that? And, of course, Eric weighed in on daddy's trial for impeachment next week. Even when he's a private citizen, they're still trying to impeach him. I mean, that's how kind of deep this whole thing goes. And it's they want to tar and feather the man. Uh, they know he did a great job for this nation. They know that there's never been a more beloved political figure in our country's history. <laughs> really? Let's have another look at that Hitler mug if we could. Oh, yeah, there it is. All right. Sorry to interrupt. Please, Eric, continue. Listen, what my father did is something that no political figure has ever done in American history. And, and he changed this country, and he changed it for the better. And he taught people how to fight, and he gave Americans the greatest civics lesson um, and it's exactly, frankly, what this country needed. He's really a father to America, and I'm incredibly proud of him. And I would be right by his side again, as painful as it was, Sean. And you know how painful it was. He's an amazing guy, and I've never been more proud of him. I've just never been more proud of him. I think he's hoping that if he says he's proud of him enough times, the father of America will maybe say it back to him one day. I don't know. <laughs> Meanwhile, Lindsey Graham is now the latest Republican to try to... Uh, rationalize the words and tweets of QAnut Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, specifically when it comes to her thoughts on Jewish space lasers. Is that true? Was she misquoted? Was she taken out of context that there's a Jewish laser, laser in the sky starting fires in California? I don't know. I, I know how words can be twisted. I know how you can be taken out of context. <laughs> wait, wait. How do you twist? <laughs> That's a real twist. Word-wise, real twist. Maybe she meant to say Jewish losers are starting the forest fires in California. I don't... Anyway, we're putting her in charge of children's education, just to be safe. <laughs> Here in Hollywood, it was day of self-congratulation. The nominations for the Golden Globes came out. Sasha Baron Cohen was nominated for Best Actor for his movie Borat, subsequent movie film. Uh, but poor Rudy Giuliani was snubbed for his brilliant turn, acting like he was just tucking in his shirt. <laughs> For her work on The Undoing, Nicole Kidman was nominated for Best Actress, who drank too much rosé and sang her show's theme song. And for the first time ever, there are more female directors nominated than male directors, which, is, which will make it especially painful when the Globe is given to a male director. The Super Bowl is on Sunday. It's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Or so we hope. The Chiefs now have a situation on their hands. More than 20 players and staffers were scheduled to get haircuts on Sunday until the team found out their barber tested positive for the virus. He was giving the haircuts. They pulled the guy in the middle of cutting someone's hair, which here's a thought. I don't know, maybe next time start the haircuts after you get the test results. <laughs> and why do they even need haircuts? They wear helmets to work. There's no reason. For... Daniel Kilgore, he's the center for the Chiefs, he got the worst deal. He was the one getting his haircut when the barber got pulled. So now, not only could he miss the Super Bowl, he looks like a broken Chia pet. <laughs> the rumor is that Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes was next in line for a haircut when they got the test back, which is scary and also weird because we asked Patrick Mahomes to be part of an all NFL edition of Mean Tweets and you'll never guess what the topic was. I imagine Patrick Mahomes Barber is a superhero who has to run out and save the world every time he gets halfway through Mahomes' haircut. Life imitates art again. I... So now I guess we'll wait 
to see if Patrick will be watching the game on Sunday from my home, the players, <laughs> they have to test negative for five consecutive days to play in the game, which, you know, even if they don't, there is a way they could play. They could just, all they need to do is have no tackling. Make it a flag type situation. <laughs> The big storyline this year is Tom Brady, the indestructible Tom Brady is making his 10th Super Bowl appearance. His trip to the Super Bowl with a new team has been the cause of some very mixed emotions for New England Patriots fans. So I wanted to check in with one we know. He's two years old and please welcome the tart tongue toddler from Seekonk, Mass, Tommy Brady Fitzpatrick. Hello, Tommy. Oh, you gotta be me, this guy? Haven't you been ravaged by the coronavirus yet? No, I have not. Sorry, nice. the China virus. I, nice to see you too, Tommy. How's everything going? Honestly, not too freaking good. This corona's been a freaking nightmare. Oh, wow. Honest to God, I've been hitting the sippy cup pretty hard. Oh, I'm, I'm very sorry to hear that, Tommy. Yeah, no kidding. My dry January lasted exactly one Paw Patrol. Not a pretty picture. <laughs> What's in that sippy cup? We call that a Howitch Haymaker. Uh, what is that, a Howitch Haymaker? Uh, it's a uh, Jägermeister, mashed bananas, and Regeneron, you fruit bowl. OK, is that, <laughs> is the Regeneron to help ward off COVID-19? No, it's to give me a boner. Of course it's for COVID, you <laughs> moron. Uh, Listen, are we going to just sit here pouting ruin each other's dingleberries all night? Or are we going to talk football? You're right, let's talk football. And specifically, I want to ask about Tom Brady. The GOAT! Tom, terrific! Touchdown, Tommy! Okay, all Woo! right, so it sounds like you're still a big Tom Brady fan. What? No! That backstabber? That broccoli eater? Jimmy, he betrayed Pat's nation to move to Florida. He plays for the Buccaneers now, are you kidding me? The guy <laughs> stole Gronk! He's a Benedict Arnold! <laughs> Guy's dead to me! Oh, wow. Dead! Uh, really? So, wow, so you really hate Tom Brady. Hate? How dare you? How <laughs> dare you? Tom Brady is the GOAT and my namesake. The GOAT, Jimmy! Wait. Okay, wait, so you like Tom Brady? I like him. I revere him. If I revered him anymore, I would have to move to revere, which I would never do because between you, me, and my brother's Rottweiler, revere, it's a freaking armpit. Okay, well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not familiar with the neighborhoods in Boston, but I feel like I'm getting kind of a mixed message. Do you love Tom Brady or do you hate him? Yes, what's the difference? You don't get it. I love Tom and I hate him and I love to hate him and I hate to love him. It's tearing me apart. Yeah. Well, this must be, I, I can see that it's, I can see this must be hard on you, Tommy. No, it's not hard, Jimmy. It's wicked hard. Oh. I got major cognitive dissonance here. Tom, why, why, why did you do oh, it? Uh, Come don't, on! Now, don't, don't, don't get Wah! all upset. Don't cry. Wah! Wah! Okay. Oh, Wah! Here, okay. Oh, you got him all worked up again, you Shows? What is wrong with you? Uh, it's, now, this is Tommy's mother, Darlene. How are you, Darlene? Shut your yap, you Holly weirdo. I was in the middle of doing yoga. You ruined everything. Sweet. All right. Uh, calm okay. down, calm yes, down. take care of your baby, please. Thank you. All right. He's calming down. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty, man. Yeah. How about you give me some of that left boob? All right. There we oh, go. no. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's, you know what? That's uh, that's a private thing between the mother. That's a mother and child thing that I feel like we shouldn't be witnessing. Okay, there you go. Woo! All right. Thanks, Matt. Really hit the spot. Look, Jimmy, every mass hall in this entire deplorable commonwealth is going to be right behind the man we all despise. Right behind From him. From Taunton to Squantum. Hmm. From Chicopee to Chelmsford. From Shrewsbury to Swanskit. Uh -huh. From Mattapan to Matt Poisett. We'll be rooting for that ungrateful two-timer. And when Tommy Touchdown lifts up that Lombardi trophy for the seventh time, as he will, mark my words, you know what it's gonna be, Jimmy? You know? No, I Do don't. Do you? No. It's gonna be bitter sweet. Wicked bitter sweet. Unbelievably so. All right, and on that note, I will say goodbye to devoted Patriots fan and child alcoholic Tommy Brady Fitzpatrick and his mother, Darlene.
Put me in the hell, Kate. You, you want a piece of me? Give you want a piece of me, little boy? I will end you. I will throw no, I don't want a piece of you. You are done. I'd done. love to introduce you to magic later on. <laughs> oh, I like magic. That was yeah, all right. you know what? We have a very good show for you. Larry Legend him in the 80s, and he'll torch yeah, him again tonight. Like he's with us. We have music from Ash Nico, and we'll be right back with Magic Johnson. So stick around. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. If you want to see all our latest videos, click the subscribe button. And if you don't, click anyway and close your eyes when they come on.